Welcome everyone to Culture Estate. My name is Louis Leva. Today I'm going to talk to you about what you can do with your EIDL money. It's been 30 days since I recorded the last video on this topic and it still seems to be the most popular question I get asked. We've learned a lot since then so we're going to update you with the new information that we have and why you should not be so focused on working capital and you should be more focused on operating expenses. We're also going to cover the 13 things that you need to know that you cannot spend this money on. So don't go anywhere. We're going to get started right now. So now let me start by classifying what the SBA has told us publicly on their website, which is so vague on what you can use this money on. The EIDL loan funds are working capital to pay the ordinary and necessary expenses and obligations as if the business were not impacted by the disaster. Funds cannot be used to expand or improve the business or refinance existing debt. However, if credit cards were used for working capital needs on an emergency basis, the proceeds can be used to pay the portion of the credit card that it was used for the emergency purpose as a result of the disaster. So if this wasn't vague enough for you, these are some other items that the SBA has stated we can use the money on. Fixed debts such as rent and mortgage, your payroll, accounts payable, and bills that you could have paid if it wasn't for COVID. And this is where it starts to get very, very tricky because there's a lot of people who state that they could have done a lot of things if it wasn't for COVID. They don't necessarily meet the criteria that they're looking for. So there's a conflict, there's a direct conflict. So today we're gonna to shed some more light on that. All right, so everyone is always hung up on what the definition of working capital is. Well, working capital is really not going to be defined to you by the SBA, but I did find some definitions on the internet. And this is what I came up with. Working capital is defined as the assets that a company has versus the liabilities a company has. So in other words, it's just the cash flow or the cash that you have on hand. And the cash that you have on hand doesn't really define what you can spend that money on. It's just cash. It's just that. So let's not get so hung up on that term. Let's start to figure out what operating expenses are because this is what we need to start learning about because this is what the SBA is basically saying that what we can use this money on. So let's define that. So this is operating expenses. An operating expenses is an expense that a business incurs through its normal business operations. That's basically what the SBA has been telling us this whole time. That includes rent, sounds familiar, right? Equipment, inventory costs, marketing, payroll, insurance, step costs, I'll get into that in just a second, and funds allocated for research and development. So step costs, just to sum it up, is basically if you, your business grows, your expenses grow. So that's okay to use more money for the same thing as long as it's more of the same thing. Same way if it goes down, your business goes down, then you can use less money. Those are called step costs. Now what we need to learn how to do is to avoid what are called capital expenses. Capital expenses are what are going to get us in trouble. Capital expenses are basically the purchase of a business makes as an investment. That's what a capital expense is. We, we can't do that because that'll what'll get us in trouble. Now, what, what are some of the examples of capital expenses? Well, real estate for starters, you know, that's basically what I would have done with the money if I, if I would have had the opportunity. We have factory equipment, computers, office furniture, and other physical capital assets. Intangible assets include such things as intellectual property, copyrights, patents, trademarks, etc. So that should basically outline to us the difference between capital expenses and operating expenses. This is where we should be focusing our attention and not so much on what is working capital and how do they define working capital. I think a lot of us has been chasing, uh, been on a wild goose chase, just looking for something that is basically not even important. These are the things we need to start outlining. What's even more important than that are the things that the SBA has been very clear about us not spending the money on. So let's start knocking some of those things out of the way. The SBA has basically given us 13 points, reference points of things that we cannot spend it on. This is a collection of things that they've definitely told us on the phone, things that uh, they have on their website, and this is basically a guide, a guide for you not to get in trouble. So let's go ahead and jump right into number one. Payments of any dividends or bonuses to any officers, stockholders, or owners of the company. Okay? Pretty simple. 
Number two would be disbursements to owners or partners, same thing as the first one, except disbursements for services rendered. So if you did something for the company, you're allowed to get paid. This is acceptable. Just don't exceed what you paid yourself in 2019. And that's a big no-no. Number three would be expansion of facilities or acquisitions of fixed assets. Okay, we spoke about that. If you're going to expand your business, you do that with your own money. You cannot do it with the EIDL loan money. All right, very simple. Fixed assets can be categorized as anything that is a car or a home or things like that more of things that you're going to have for the long term okay machinery those are the type of things you cannot buy with the eidl loan money number four would be a repair or replacement of physical damages now this is something that i don't agree with i'm not really happy about this one and i think we could all probably uh, agree that we can argue this one so let's say you had some machinery that broke down and you need the eidl loan money to keep your business going be, uh, by fixing that that machinery I think that it's something that we can all argue if the audit ever came to us that this is a necessary expense and this is a working, uh, working capital expense that could be classified as operating expenses. So I think that what uh, this is uh, very flawed. I think this is something they need to very, very much uh, do away with or maybe give some more details on how that one could affect us. Uh, number five would be refinancing long-term debt. So if you're thinking about refinancing your auto loan or refinancing your home with this money, it's not going to happen. You cannot do it. You cannot use it for that. Anything that's over one year old, you cannot do. Okay, guys? Number six, paying down uh, installment payments. So anything that's over one year old, same thing, you cannot pay it down. If it's your credit cards, you can actually pay down your credit cards, pay off your credit cards, but it should be only used for expenses that were incurred after January 31st. But money is fungible, so it's very difficult to say, and I've spoken to so many people about this. What if your intention was to pay off that total credit card in March, but you couldn't because of the pandemic? This is something that you're going to have to make your best decision on. You're going to have to talk to your CPA and do some investigating on yourself whether or not this is something you're going to want to do with the EIDL loan money. Number seven would be payment of any part of a direct federal debt. Okay, let me repeat that. Payment of any part of a direct federal debt except IRS payments. Now, IRS payments are okay to pay for with this money from all the research we've been doing from all the commentary we've been getting you should be fine with paying any tax that's due to the irs whether that's 2019 or your 2020 quarterlies whatever that expense is it should be fine we've gotten uh, green lights from the sba we've gotten a lot of cpas on the line we've gotten a lot of people on these on these who have been viewing this channel telling us that it's okay to make your payments on irs so Everything else, that's a debt with the federal debt. You cannot use it for it, but for this, you can. Number eight, pay any penalty resulting from non-compliance with the law. So if you get in trouble, you cannot use this to pay down any penalties or any, or any fines that you may get. Okay, guys, that is very, very important that you must remember. It's not to bail you out. Number nine would be contractor malfeasance. That's fun to say, contractor malfeasance. So what that basically means is that if a contractor ripped you off, and you lost money, you cannot use this money to make yourself whole. Number 10, relocation, all right? Relocation is very, very strict. You cannot relocate your business. And the reason why is because when this loan was initially uh, structured, it was to make sure that areas impacted by a natural disaster don't end up having a mass exodus. So let's just say the Katrina, when the Katrina hit, if everyone took the money that they got from the EIDL loan and they moved out of Louisiana, it would leave Louisiana as a wasteland. So what the government doesn't want is for people to take this money and just go somewhere else. They want to, they want to make sure that those areas stay uh, productive and people stay around and, and re recover their businesses and neighborhoods. Number 11 would be it's not for your lost profits. So if you normally make $50,000 a month and because of COVID you're only making $30,000 a month but all your expenses are paid for with the 30k you can't just take the extra 20k every month and give yourself that money because those are lost profits it's not meant for that number 12 it cannot be used as the same purpose as what the PPP is being used for remember the PPP 
a portion of it, the majority of it, has to be used for payroll. So we know if you're using PPP for your payroll, you can't use EIDL for payroll too. Only after the PPP has been exhausted, then you can start using the EIDL loan money for payroll. But remember, there's other things that the PPP allows you to pay for as well. So if you use it for that, don't make, make sure you don't use the EIDL loan for the same purpose, such as rent or whatever the case may be, okay? You wanna keep those separate. And 13, this is one that I'm um, a little sad about, but a lot of people have been asking is, can you use it to invest? If your business is in the business of investing, you know, not like you're in the business of making hats like I spoke about before, and today you wanna go dump $20,000 into Tesla stock. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about, let's just say that your business is, you're a real estate wholesaler, you're a real estate investor. You cannot use it to buy more real estate. If you're in a business of day trading, you cannot use it to go buy stocks. So this is something you must remember. I've heard some crazy stories. I mean, I've gotten viewers telling me that people are definitely investing with it. I've gotten people telling me that people are getting plastic surgery with the money. There's just so many, so many stories I've been hearing. It's just insane. But if you follow these 13 steps, you will be more than fine. You'll be in good shape. And you won't have anything to worry about. So while we're on the topic of investing, I'm really excited because I just downloaded this application called Webull. Webull actually allows me to trade stock, cryptocurrency, and just about anything I would like. And this week is going to be an absolute bloodbath on the stock market. So I can't wait to go in there and scoop up some really good deals. If you guys want in on the action, I'm gonna leave a link down below where you can sign up. And not only that, but they give you two free stocks with one of those stocks being valued up to $1,400. I can't wait to get started. It's gonna be awesome. But if you guys wanna learn more about the EIDL loan, I'm gonna leave a playlist right here where you guys can learn everything that you need to know. Thank you guys for watching. And if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with a friend, leave us a comment, and most importantly, subscribe to the channel. Thank you guys, and we'll see you next time.